say welcome to Splice Beta 2020. It's our third, it's our third try. We've been trying to do Splice Beta for a while uh, this year. It was meant to be in person in February in Chiang Mai. It was meant to be in person in September in Chiang Mai. And version three, here we are. Uh, September 1, all the month of September. We're doing it online, obviously. Um, it's going to be different, but it's not going to be any less fun. We've got some great talent lined up. We're looking forward to doing this, and we're so happy you could join us. Thank you for having us in your, in, on your screens right now. Uh, we're very grateful. Um, I'm going to start very quickly with who we are. Uh, should we, we should probably run the run our little presentation right now. Um, so I am going to present. Okay. So for those of you who have friends who are trying to get into this, we're actually, we're, we're okay, we're at 83 people now, but there's a cap of 250. Uh, for those of you and your colleagues who are not able to, to join future sessions of this one, uh, you just have to go to our splicebeta.com page. We have this streaming live uh, there as well. Uh, we decided to make it open because, well, we just kind of needed to. Okay. All right. Here we are. Um, all right, so wonderful. I just want, I'd like to um, introduce us uh, at, at the outset. Um, we're, we're Rashad, Alan, and Shirley. Um, um, Alan and I, you know, we're, we set up Splice um, a few years ago. Uh, because we wanted to celebrate media in Asia, especially media startups in Asia. We uh, do this by reporting on media. We train media, uh, media startups. Uh, we do transformation projects with them. And we also recently started funding them with the help of uh, all of our partners. Uh, we're very grateful to be doing this. But, you know, um, Alan, let's, let's remind everybody why we do this. Why do we do beta? You know, when we started... Well, I think it must have been about three years ago when we started talking about the need for, for something like this in, in Asia, right? Um, there is, there's a need for a community that understands where media is going and also embraces the fact that this transformation that we're seeing in this space is real, it's happening, it's already happening, it's not a destination, it's part of a process um, of, of media companies understanding what it's about to use uh, new digital infrastructure to reach new audiences. We felt that there was not enough attention that was being spent on on companies, small little companies who were small, nimble, fast, but but knew how to how to serve the needs of an audience. And so Splice Beta is basically that. This is our showcase of what this region has to offer in terms of media startups. We think that there are some really smart people that are out there who are building great products, who are building great little companies that most of us would never otherwise have heard of. Uh, we also want uh, Splice Beta to be a platform in which people discover not just new companies, but also great talent that's out there. So you'll see this in, in the way we've organized uh, the program. Uh, we'll talk you through how all of this is coming together, but this is something that really means a lot to us. We're really excited about the program. Um... And we wanted to we wanted to take you guys uh, before we get to that we're going to take you guys through some ground rules some housekeeping. Uh, I I'm I'm just going to quickly uh, have Alan walk us through this. Yeah. So for those of you who've joined us in previous uh, low res sessions, in fact, you know, low res was our secret project to learn how to do some of this stuff and to to do it better, right? Um, so LORES is where we start experimenting with a live format earlier this year to see what we could do around that um, and how to make it not so webinar-like, right? Yeah. So, so anyway, so here are some ground rules uh, that, that we've kind of assembled over, you know, over, over the months. Uh, if you're tweeting, and we would really encourage this, if you're tweeting or sharing a post on, on, on Facebook, uh, please use the Splice Beta um, hashtag just because we want to get this out there to, to as many people as possible. Um, if you are um, joining us and you'll be speaking, 
please make sure you are on headphones uh, like like these. Something simple, something cheap would do the trick. Uh, be in a quiet room with good light, uh, just because we want to be able to see you and hear you. Um, leave your comments, uh, leave your questions in the chat box that you see on the right side. And look, like sorry, you found it. Um, Feel free to introduce yourselves there, say hello, uh, leave your email address so that other people can get in touch with you. Remember, what we're trying to do here at Beta is to make sure that everyone gets to know each other, to learn from each other, and therefore enrich this community that we're all a part of. Um, put yourself on mute when you're not speaking, because that makes a huge difference when you have an audience of this size. Um, just remember also that this will be publicly available at the end of the session on our Facebook page and our YouTube page. Um, and point number seven, porn bombing is a thing. And this is something that we've seen previously. Uh, we have had this happen to us once. If it happens, let's all be adults about it and just move on. You know, we're, we're, we'll do what we can to kick them off as quickly as we can. That's right. Uh, more importantly, be kind, be generous. This is a really tough for a lot of people, a lot of organizations that are out there. Uh, we're all here to learn from each other. So, you know, no judgment needed. Good. All right. Um, and you know, I'm, we're going to be introducing uh, these wonderful two guests very soon. Uh, but I also want to go back to uh, to the program. I'm kind of I'm really excited uh, about the program. Alan and I uh, ha and and Shirley have been building this for months and months and months. Uh, as I said, you know, we wanted to do beta in in January. Um, um, and uh, we wanted to do it in February, and so we've we've had a little we've had a little practice doing all of this. Um, Alan, I mean this this talent is amazing. It's it's literally across what the the global media ecosystem. But um, yes, um, you know what, Alan's reminding me to do a very important thing. Thank you very much. We really really want to we want to thank our sponsors. They're right here. And we're so grateful uh, to all of you. Thank you, Facebook Journalism Project, uh, for supporting us. Thank you so much, KAS, uh, for standing by us. Google, Luminate, MDIF, you've been our real, real friends. Uh, AFP, Folio Institute, and IMS, um, thank you so much for the support. We could not have done this without you. And um, Click to View and Puma Podcast are providing us uh, video and audio technical support, uh, for which we're very grateful. All the videos that you see um, are going to be thanks to Click to View. All of our audio stuff, including this little podcast that we've been we we've just started up called Splice Pink, is going to be thanks to Puma Podcast and the the magnificent Robbie Alumpai. Uh, and if you're wondering how we managed to keep the price as low as $5, and on top of that, give it for free, <laughs> uh, it is really because of all these sponsors who, who backed us uh, on this one. These are people who we've been talking to for, for months now on, on this, um, and who said, you know, for months, despite the, the, uh, the COVID situation, many of them have stuck with us and they've said, hey, we still believe in something like this, and so we're, we're still going to come in and sponsor. So thank you so much for, for sticking with us. It's a big deal. Um, you know, these guys, you know, it's not just about the money and the, the budgets. It's about showing up and uh, telling us that they believe in us, and that means a lot. It really does. Um, now let's go. Now let's go. Now, now let's get to the program. So for those of you who've seen the website, uh, we are incredibly proud of this. Uh, SpliceBeta.com slash program will show you exactly what we're talking about here. We have 48 confirmed speakers, uh, but that's not a number that we're most proud of. We're extremely proud of the fact that we have gender balance at 50 to 50 here, uh, women to, to men. So this is something that we've been very proud of and we've been working on for, for months to make sure that we have the right balance here. And we are doing this also because we wanted to show the industry that this is indeed possible uh, in a region like this, right? So we're, we're incredibly proud of it. Uh, take the time to, to look at the program. Uh, we've got a number of countries also represented here. We've got a number of very different types of topics uh, being addressed, everything from how to run business to how to get funding, how to build, uh, you know, uh, reader revenue, how to how to you know think about your big tech or small tech, 
how to build the right infrastructure to get your business going. So our focus has always been on media entrepreneurs and the teams that they run. So this is all about that, right? Um, so now, how are we going to make the most of beta, right? We've got 48 uh, speakers. What's the best way to, to figure all this out? So, right. So, you know, the interesting thing is, um, I think we've had a lot of questions about, you know, um, how do I get into beta? How do I attend? What is my password? What is my code? What is my entry code? And I think what's, I think uh, a lot of people expect this to run like Zoom. We don't use Zoom uh, for a number of reasons. Um, we use Google Meet, and which is a far more open kind of uh, platform. And it's not as restrictive in terms of privacy and in terms of uh, organizer controls. Uh, but the uh, but what also happens with 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 Meet is that you you tend to, you know, because there are no entry barriers and there are no passcodes, uh, it tends to confuse people who are not who are used to getting specific codes and specific passwords. There's no password. Uh, there is no there is no code. Um, you can uh, the reason we're on this slide right now is that you can attend sessions in a number of different ways. And I just want to quickly run through that. You can go to splicebeta.com program. And uh, you will see the program. You will see in all the sessions, all of our beautiful speakers. Um, you'll be able to see details. Um, and you will be able to add that to your calendar and, and attend, uh, uh, attend that session. Um, you will also be able to go through um, our <clears throat> a page called Splice Beta Stacks. I'm going to need a drink of water. Stacks will give you the way we've actually broken, <clears throat> broken beta up. Mondays are for business and strategy. Tuesdays are for products. Wednesdays are for audiences. Thursdays are operations. And Fridays are for media careers. We believe that this kind of workflow or this journey is what you go through when you when you build a media company, any size of media company, any size of uh, media organization, whether it's a massive conglomerate or whether it's your one person startup. Um, again, I want to remind you that we're talking to two, uh, two startup founders, media startup founders today. Uh, I, I frankly can't wait to get to that part of the program. Um, so yes, go to splicebeta.com stacks and figure out which stack excites you most. Uh, the third way to do this, of course, is, you know, there's always a Google Calendar, which means that you can, you will be able to find links to the calendar on the program page and on the stacks page and a number of other places on the website. Um, you know, a good way to do this is just, just hit subscribe. You get the entire calendar. And you can then, you know, set your own, um, uh, uh, you know, reminders as to which sessions you want to join, or you can hit individual sessions in the calendar, and um, you know, basically show up. Here's the other thing that I want to tell you: there is one single link for all of beta. This link that you're on will get you into every single session. We've got about 46 sessions. We've got 48 speakers. This link will work for every single one of those, whether or not you have a ticket. So let me come to the ticket thing. There is no such thing. We'd like you to, we'd like you to pay a notional $5. The $5 has nothing to do with whether you can get into beta or not. It has nothing to do with whether you have more rights than people who don't have a ticket. It is, we believe that uh, we should be paying for media. Um, we believe very strongly in this, um, even though we're, we're, for, we're in a position where we've been lucky enough to get this, get a whole lot of very fine people to, to sponsor us. Uh, we still think that this is worth, worth money and that you should pay for it. Um, and we're very grateful for your ticket money. Thank you so much. Alan. Uh, we probably should tell them about the 250 people limit. Yeah, so there is a technical limit uh, on on Google Meet where you can have up to 250 people on each session, and beyond that, you know, no one else will be admitted. 
So if you come late and all, all seats are taken, you just have to go to our website, splicebeta.com, and you'll see a live uh, feed there that, that, we're, that we're streaming out to. Uh, also, at the end of the, of, the, uh, of the session, we'll be putting this out to, to our Facebook page and our YouTube channel as well. Uh, we are also, uh, you know, we're also quite excited about a new little project around, um, around uh, Splice Pink, which is something that we put out the first episode in, uh, which is our podcast uh, series. Um, we'll be doing a number of recordings around, um, around beta, uh, especially around the knowledge that have been, that have been, uh, that have been acquired here. So watch out for that. We're doing that uh, um, in partnership with our friends at, at Puma. So we're very excited by that. Uh, also, we've, we've, got, um, we've got six fellows who are helping us write up each session. So if you miss the, the long video presentations, you can always just read the articles. They'll be writing up a, a very simple summary around that. OK, uh, another way, uh, another thing to keep in mind is that we would love for you to, to stay in touch with us. Uh, again, like this is something that, that we care a lot about. We want to connect people. Uh, so that they can learn from each other. We want to build a network and we want to build a community around Media Star Asia. So uh, there's a Telegram group um, out there. Uh, we'll drop the link to that uh, later on. Uh, join our, our uh, Beta 2020 Telegram group. Um, you know, seek us out on Twitter. Once again, use the Splice Beta uh, hashtag. And there's always email. So you know how to get in touch with us. You just literally have to write to hit reply to any email that we send you. In, one of us will, will be in touch. Um, so that's important. What else should we say? Oh, yes. Uh, we're making available mentors, or rather, a number of people have made themselves available so that you, if you need help in very specific areas around, say, how to run a business, how to build a product, how to prototype, uh, how to run a team. Uh, there are a number of very smart people who've made uh, time to, to, and, and are offering their time to teach and to and to be coached. So if you want to reach out to uh, to any one of them, you do it through us. Let us know what you like to learn, and we'll find someone to connect you with. So those are our mentors. Also, if you want an introduction to someone else, if you're looking at all these faces here and you're going, that's a really smart person that I really wanted to get in touch with. Please help. Uh, let us help you uh, with introductions. Right. So you know how to get in touch with us. That is it, I guess. Should we get some feedback? Yes. So we'd really love your feedback. Um, you know, we're we're interested in how you came through some of these user flows. Again, this is not this is not some official process. We just really want to hear anecdotally how how did you come by beta? You know, how did you buy tickets? Hi, Janie. How did you actually sign up? Was it easy? Was it difficult? Did you wonder about your invite code? Um, I'm curious. I'm, you know, we're, I'm the product guy at Splice. Um, in a way, we're all product people. In a way, we all need to be product people if you work in media. <laughs> so the idea is to figure out you know, whether, this, whether this worked for our users. Um, are, we, are we good? to you know feel free to pop it in the chat feel free to unmute yourselves and and speak we're happy to hear from you uh, um, we we really want to know how it was what was your experience maybe one way that we can do this in the chat uh, as well is you know on a scale of one to five how easy was it for you to get in here um, five being super easy zero friction for you just put a number in, into the chat. Uh, ooh. Whoa, wow. We got lots of you guys are very kind. That's really, that's really kind. Wow. OK. Oh, well, then. Lots Problem of solved. Time. <laughs> <laughs> we were uh, kind of worried that people couldn't find the link. We had a number of emails coming back going, right. how do I find the link to this session? Where's right. the join link? Where's my password? Right. Um, yeah, and and you know, I I think that um, one of the one of the feelings that we had in the team with Alan and Shirley and and and, and me, um, we we didn't know how people would respond to a ticket because when you think of ticket, you th you think of something that gets you in somewhere, something that gives you access, you know, uh, 
and then you also assume that if I don't have a ticket, I can't get in. Uh, if this wasn't uh, the impression you had that, that that's great, you know, um, we may have done this, you know, we had to talk about this stuff over lunch and coffee and breakfast and all of it. Uh, we may do it differently. But, right. Uh, Shirley. Shirley. What are we missing here? Shirley, camera's going on you. It's on cam too now. So, guys. Say hi to Shirley. She's making hi. all this happening you know, behind the scene. As all producers are meant to do, she is producing. And now back to you guys. Whoa. Really? Look at that. That's what happens when you give Shirley control. OK. How about, how about um, are, we, are, are we good with feedback? You know, listen, again, uh, as Alan said, we're literally at the end of every single email we send out. Please send us email. Please tell us what you think. Um, um, you know, up here, we are getting a, a, a message about the Hangout uh, links. Um, a bit of text to reassure it was the right link would have been good. That's a good, that's a good point. Um, mm. Yeah, and, and Guy3 is saying that, you know, the low res sessions uh, established that we communicate with attendees, which is fine. I, I, yeah, it was, it was awesome to actually uh, do that, but I, I did actually want to um, make the website uh, self-explanatory. Uh, you know what we should do? Uh, we should move on from all this boring feedback stuff and 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 talk to Mariam um, about more important things. Um, Mariam, show yourself. Uh, we'd like to introduce Mariam Hi, Chaudhry. Guys. There you go. We're super fans here, Mariam. Uh, we stumbled oh, on Mariam so because. Just recently, um, Irene at Google has been you know, talking about you and trying to get us to get in touch with you over and over again. Exactly. She has a lot of love for you. Uh, and so we're really excited to have you here with us. Uh, welcome to the community. Welcome to, to the bunch of people that we absolutely love. Um, you know, so Mariam runs uh, The Current in Pakistan. Uh, the current, for for those of you who have not seen it, is about a year and a half years old, kind of. Yeah. But Miriam's yeah. journey to this has been an interesting one, uh, and actually, she's joining us today to give you a, an abridged version of that. She has a session later this month where she'll give you a bit more detail into how she, you know, how she stumbled upon uh, entrepreneurship on on her side. Um, she started out as a as a TV producer, uh, still is a TV producer, executive producer, no less. Uh, someone who's watching this shot right now and the audio and the video and going, Alan, you could have done that better, uh, having come from TV yourself. Um, <laughs> um, but what we're most excited by is the fact that here we have someone who started something, uh, making a mid-career change uh, to try something new, to try something that probably everyone else says, you got to be crazy to, first of all, stay in media, secondly, to try to run a small little team uh, delivering news. How much of this is accurate, Miriam? Um, I'm a senior executive producer, so it's just one step above. Um, but uh, otherwise, it's pretty accurate. It was, uh, it's been a good journey. It's um, been very interesting. I never thought I'd be here, very honestly, if it wasn't for my co-founder at the time who kind of pushed me into this. Um, I started in journalism in Pakistan 12 years ago. I stayed with the same company, Geo News, which is the largest news organization in Pakistan, um, for about 11 of those years. And I'm still with them because when I offered up my resignation and said, hey, I'm going, I'm going to start something on my own, my own startup, they said, no, why don't you stick around? You can take like a little bit of a lesser role and then uh, also do your own thing, which kind of really worked considering I don't get a salary from my startup. So having a side job is, is, is a great thing to have. Um, so it's been a great, it was two years ago, I was handling the biggest election transmission of the country. Now I just handle one program for the channel and I do my, my baby, which is The Current. So The Current, for who you guys don't know, this is the mug. This is our logo that I'm having a coffee in. And um, it's basically a very young, uh, hip way of teaching the younger generation or like kind of giving them information about um, 
news and politics, entertainment and lifestyle in Pakistan. So the reason why I started it was because uh, right after the election, I felt like the younger generation really wants to be interested in politics, which we're actually seeing in the worldwide trend, I would say. But they didn't have an avenue of uh, a place that would explain to them really what does it mean, you know, these different political parties, different areas, what does all of that mean? So it was just a way that you could come in and ask those questions. They can't ask anybody else. Meet politicians and uh, journalists and celebrities in a very different light. Uh, the interviews that we do that are very popular. And then also, um, you know, be able to interact with other people. So the main goal was creating a community, which we kind of have done in a year and a half. I'm incredibly proud to say that I have a team of 10, 11, including the HR guy who's part time. We discussed that earlier. And he's, um, so, so it's just us running this 24 hour network videos and audios and uh, you know uh, articles and stuff so it's been it's been a great journey but what i would like to talk about in my big talk when we do that thank you guys i mean it's amazing to be honored among such great people is about how two women a women that start up are actually managing to run this thing in a place where media isn't really very free <laughs> so we're going to talk about that i think but in this session if i just have a few minutes i do want to talk about splice lights on um i am incredibly grateful to you guys you guys came in at a time where uh, we really needed you. I was two or three months ago when COVID hit, we actually ran out of a lot of uh, our money. Uh, it was my investment that's kind of been running this thing. So it's been solely my life savings that have been put into this. And it was uh, no, I mean, everything was drying up because of COVID. So a friend of mine told me about Slice Lights on that I should apply. The application process was really simple, which I loved. Um, and it was uh, it was a savior. It saved us for two months. Uh, we did win a GNI Innovation Challenge as well, which is going to come in next month. So we're safe for a good uh, year. But um, Slice really helped us out. So I would urge everyone to apply. They're great people to work with. With Shirley, I was like, well, do we need this? Do you need that? Do you need receipts for this? Do you need stuff like that? And she was like, no, you just need to give me this. That's all there is to it. So I would really urge, I think this is a fantastic initiative and I hope that it continues. I mean, for people like us, it's a godsend. So. No, don't, don't don't tell everybody about our lack of governance here. <laughs> but oh. you know, we're no, <laughs> I'm true. kidding. But but I, I wanted I wanted to say, you know, Anjali and Alex from Facebook are here. They're the ones who made it happen. So if Alex, you want to jump in and say a quick hello or Anjali, if you're still on. Tell us about Splice Lights On, Alex. That was that was all you and and we're so grateful. Thank you, Mariam and Rashad and, and Shirley. Um I think, you know. The whole world had to pivot um, when COVID happened. And, you know, at Facebook, we had our plans like beautifully lined up for the whole year in terms of our programs and our investments and our grants that we had planned. And what we realized very quickly was that there was a real urgency to support newsrooms quickly once COVID hit. And obviously, we had to transition to um digital we had to transition to a virtual world so i think within facebook you know led by anjali and and the entire team we put together a series of programs um where we were able to deliver grants quickly to different newsrooms in emerging and developing markets um i think you know richard and, and alan did an amazing job of bringing that together very quickly communicating it to the ecosystem uh, very quickly and then getting the funds out to you guys very quickly indeed. So I think it was a joint effort and I think it's very much part of how we all had to pivot with COVID and how we all had to think about how to work together to take the news industry forward in really, really difficult times. Um, and Mariam, it, it's wonderful to hear you, you talk about Splice Lights On and, and how it helped your business and you know thank you again to Richard and Alan and Shirley for making it happen uh, with Facebook it was if I can Good. add Angelique. it was truly like at a crucial time so I mean I think a lot of media startups would be um, incredibly grateful for it we're so happy to hear you say that listen I just want to quickly Mariam please go on I'm sorry to interrupt again but I just wanted to remind everybody here that Mariam is coming back to talk about the current in far more detail and she's going to be back Friday, September 4, uh, from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Singapore time. Uh, I'm going to leave the rest of you uh, respectfully to calculate that in your local times. That's September 4, this Friday at 7 to 8. I sound like one of those radio presenters. 
This is something you're trying to sell us. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mariam, go uh, right back at you, please. Um, no, I think I'm uh, pretty done, but I have, you guys will meet the team, so do attend the session. I have recorded a bit with them uh, because a startup is nothing without its team. Um, and uh, so a bunch of videos, some cool stuff to show you guys what we do. It's interesting for people, I think, to find out that we're from Pakistan. It's not a very, um, con it's a con not a country considered to have many media startups, especially women-led. So I think it'd be kind of cool for you guys to kind of have that experience. I'll take you into the office, which we share with two other startups. So it, it's cool stuff. Um, wow. But I know the next speaker you guys oh, have is, is incredibly cool. So. I'm, uh, we're especially excited to meet your uh, HR guy. Uh, yeah. You said that he's also a, he's also a, a, a pretty deft uh, media startup person as well. My HR guy is actually my um, is is part time. He's works with me at Geo News, and we've known each other for years. So when I started this, I had to have him on the team. So I got permission that he was able to. Um, I mean, Geo has been great. They were like, you know, start your own thing. You're our competition. We don't really care. It's okay. Take our take your guy HR guy. It's fine. So it's uh, been a lot of good support. So he's our food reviewer. So he goes out and he reviews food. Uh, the, we just did one yesterday, and it was Papa John's pizza. Um, so oh, uh, that's nice. coming out next week. And he does our um, drama serial reviews. So dramas, which are like, you know, TV series are incredibly popular in Pakistan and in India. And um, so we do a lot of those reviews. And he's like, he's really, really, I mean, he's really good at that. So he does a lot of stuff. So he does finance also. He does marketing also. So he has, he's like, a, he's a great guy. You guys will meet him. I've done a video with him. Yeah. Alan, can we, can we get an HR guy who's also a food reviewer? And can I apply exactly. for that job? <laughs> food. I'm oh. not giving him oh. up. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> he's not, oh, he's not man. So, Mariam, we don't want to steal the thunder <laughs> from no. your presentation, uh, you know, later um, this week. Um, but, oh, wait, I just had my kids in, in the shot there just now. Um, and obviously, you know, little Leo, the Leo, come back. He's, you know, he doesn't have his shorts on. Anyway, <laughs> all parents know this. This is his 32 year old son, but that's right. <laughs> um, we also I locked to have, my door uh, so my daughter can't get it. Oh, that's smart. Uh, we <laughs> also had Maria, who was supposed to, to join us from Malaysia. I don't think she can make it, right, Shirley? Shirley, you want to tell us a little bit about what, you know, what she's been working on and what she's up to and why she's not here? Please, because I think that's a really great story. Have we switched to Shirley? Look In the there. dark? Hi. <laughs> don't worry, your child's coming back. There it is. So, so Ma Maria. Um, she's a one woman show, started up her own. You guys are on mute. Shirley, are you on mute? Oh. Um, okay, you're, you're fine. Start, start again. Start okay. again. So, fine. well, Maria is, is a one woman show, as amazing as Mariam. Um, she's from Malaysia. And right now she's waiting for a, let me read out her message. I'm actually at the breaking news location for a stateless esports player to get citizenship certificate. So she's unable to join us because work comes first. <laughs> yeah. It's breaking news and when it comes to esports. Yeah. I just want to remind everybody that uh, Maria, Maria's session, which is excitingly titled, this is how I built an esports media startup in Malaysia. I think in like three years, it's gonna, we're going to, you know, edit that to say this is how I built an esports empire in Malaysia. She's she's uh, uh, a couple of weeks from now. She is on Wednesday, September 16. Please come by for her session. That's four to five p.m. Singapore time, September 16. Um, very good. Um, so. Which we do now. Let's, um, you know, let's go back to uh, uh, to Mariam. Uh, I think a lot of people have a lot of questions for you now, right? Uh, I kind of feel like this is going to detract from, it, yeah. from your Friday session, but you know what? Let's just do this. Uh, who's got questions for Mariam? Questions for Mariam. Go for it. Um, you, you're welcome to put them in the chat box, but you really are welcome to unmute yourselves. Um, you know, again, drink, have a drink, whatever time it is for you. Um, you know, we'd love to hear from you. Unmute, chat to us. This is just the first session. We can kick it off. Uh, I love that. I love that Charlie's calling it Splice Timber. Not me. Thank you, Corinne. Timber. Green. Green. 
We have to we have to men mention Corinne every time we say splice timber brought to you by Corinne. Oh, please don't. So, Maren, yeah. <laughs> how are you? Yeah, I'm good actually. Sorry, I missed the beginning. Um, yeah, I'm I'm good. I'm freezing here in in uh, you know rural New South Wales. So it's so nice to see folks in um, the Asian region. Hi, everybody from Australia. Nice and warm up there. Lucky you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm envious and I'm warm. But, well, yeah, yes. but I, yeah, the the lineup is just amazing. So, and it's so nice to feel um, connected with everybody, and not just connected, you know, to the sort of. I, this is the only conference where I don't have to stay up all night for. So this is awesome. You know, it's not it's not America, that's it's not plan. Europe. It's this it's our region. So that's really special. Anyway, this I'm going to get true. off. But yeah, it's so good. Thank you. Well, speaking. Speaking about another region, and thanks, thanks, Corinne. Tim Jenkins, it's so good to see you, my friend. We're we're just putting you on the spot here, I know, but oh we haven't seen you in a while, uh, and just hey because guys. you just tweeted at us. Yeah, well, hey, Tim hey, Jenkins, everybody. a dear friend. Yeah, yeah uh, I'm excited to be a part of Splice Beta again. I was really disappointed that it got canceled, kind of twice. So uh, I'm looking forward to all all the whole lineup. I'm excited. Um, and then shout out to anyone from Mongolia uh, that's on here. Um, I'm based in Mongolia, so winter is coming. Um, enjoy the warmth uh, down south. You sound like uh, Game of Thrones. Uh, winter is coming. Um, uh, nowhere close to Singapore, sadly. How we 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 worked with Tim when when he worked in Cambodia. He gets around. Um, we we hope to be working with him in Mongolia when when if and when we can ever get uh, on a plane again. Um, oh, and hey, Rashad, yes. sorry, one more thing. Uh, I just want to thank the Splice Beta family. Um, I, I received about $300 in donations from you guys to help feed children here in Mongolia. And it was really, I'm going to get emotional, but it was really touching. So uh, so thank you guys oh, go for, on. for your contributions. <laughs> um, you know, every little bit helped. Anytime, uh, buddy. In the end, we ended up feeding about thirteen thousand uh, children and their and their families. So, yeah. So, thank you guys well, for that's your. So projects. wonderful to hear. Is that project still running? Do you want to do a quick pitch? Please go. No, ahead. no. It, 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 it's ended. School starting, and kids are able to have their bellies full. Um, but th thank you guys for your contributions. Really, really grateful. Fantastic. Okay. Oh, we got a question. Uh, hold on. When you're pulling up the question, I want to say Chitra Daya Rusty, you really got your name right, Chitra. Um, she has a session coming up as well about how she did a cool deal with Spotify. Uh, Chitra, we might call on you later to talk about that if we have time. Uh, you can do a quick preview of your session. But sorry, back back to you, Alan. Uh, let's ask. Yeah, Marianne. so we got a question from Florence here uh, for Miriam. Uh, how many women do you have in your team, and what is your perspective of women and media in Pakistan? Which is a fantastic question. However, we're not hearing you. Uh, oh, there we go. Yeah. My co-founder. Okay, when I started the current a year ago, I started with two female co-founders. And um, so they kind of, uh, you know, branched out or kind of weren't able to give it as much time as a startup would require. So they decided to step out. I mean, I don't think people realize how much work it is. I didn't uh, myself either. So my next co-founder is also a woman. I have one, two, th so there are four of us. There are four women. And so there are six men. Because, uh, and I think that the, even though for me it's been a priority to, to hire women, the problem kind of, kind of comes exactly with Florence's question. Uh, for women and media in Pakistan, there were very few. There are very few women in the media industry, in, be it TV, print, or uh, digital, especially in senior positions. Um, so when I was at in, the, in my TV um, position, I was actually pushing for a lot more female analysts to come forward. And we did create a lot of them, and we did kind of push them and promote them. So it is growing, but it, is, it isn't the way that it should be. Um, and I think with TV generally, it's it's tough because women are kind of seen as just being a pretty face on TV. Uh, it's very interesting that Geo News, again, which is the largest uh, news channel, uh, the election transmission is one of the biggest uh, we ever do in five years. Uh, I ran the production side and the content side was also run by a woman. 
but you wouldn't know that uh, because we're behind the scenes. So you have two women that ran the biggest news channel's coverage of the election, uh, except you wouldn't kind of see their faces on TV. So you kind of think that the men ran it. So I feel like there are a lot of hidden women, uh, that women that do great stuff uh, that aren't given credit for it. And that does tend to happen in the media as well. So. Our hidden woman's name is Shirley. Uh, yes. We're very proud of her. Uh, <laughs> we seek to unhide her every chance we get. Um, we're a little ashamed of being two, two dudes standing in front of this camera. Um, yeah, 66% male company. We've got to change that. That's right. Um, Merm, tell us a little bit more about, I'm intrigued by this whole notion of trying to reach uh, a younger audience with news, right? I mean, it's it's easy to say that young people don't care about news, but obviously you found a way to tell stories that are engaging for a younger generation. Uh, what's the secret there? Uh, I think it's mostly uh, people just want to know simple stuff. Uh, the more complicated you make it, the more people are not interested, especially with, with this generation, because they're so used to just fl fl flipping on their phones. With digital, it's even like harder. Um, so what we kind of did was we said, okay, what do they like to watch? Well, they like to watch interviews like Vogue 73 questions, where a camera's following a celebrity and they're kind of walking around and answering fun stuff about their lives and what love and marriage and the rest of it. So we kind of took that concept switched it for politicians and kind of made them do fun stuff and then ask them questions about their politics and where they come from and what they are. So one of the first ones that we did and we launched was uh, with the uh, former Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto's son, Bilabal Bhutto, who's never really given an interview like that. So we had him walking around and pretend like he's walking me to his office and he's talking about the girl he wants to marry and you know she has to get along with his sisters and you know, she has to be funny. and. And what kind of food he likes, what he watches on what he watches on Netflix. But then within that, we spoke about politics and you know what what he wants for the country uh, as a future a potential prime minister. So it's mostly taking stuff that we we all like to do: watch TV, food, uh, and then kind of wrapping it around and then giving it a more of a um, you know awareness feel to it. So I think that's why it worked for us. It also worked because we asked questions, we answered the questions that nobody wants to like actually say. Like if you if somebody says, you know, who, who is Nawaz Sharif's son, who is an opposition leader? It's like, you don't know who he is? Like, how can you not know who he is? So people that kind of fear asking the questions, the answers they should know, we kind of did, do answer those questions and simplify that, which is, I mean, our, our following on Facebook is about 500K plus. I'm not sure the latest figures in a year. And it's done incredibly well. Uh, our interviews are picked up by all major news channels and, and, and stuff because of the content that they deliver. So I think it's basically not, uh, it's just kind of simplifying stuff and making it more home-like, more like life-like, which has kind of worked for us. I have so many questions to ask you about, you know, why you think you resonate with your followers. Um, you know, these are obviously not drive-by likes, you know, these are not, you know, mm -hmm. this is actually resonating with a section of the audience. And I'd love to know whether this, how intentional this is, uh, whether you struck a nerve by mistake, you know, anecdotally, but also what your analytics are. But I'm going to wait for your session uh, when we come there. Uh, Raven has a question for you, Mariam, um, and I and I I I love this question. Uh, can we call attention to uh, women who are working behind the scenes in media in gen in general? And um, Raven is um, saying that your your observation applies not just to Pakistan, but obviously across the board in Asia. And I I would extend that to, you know, there are a lot among you on the chat who would who would agree that this extends to um, uh, pretty much globally. Uh, I would say promote, promote, promote. Um, put them on the screen. Force them to be on it. Uh, I mean, again, with reference to the election, we had all male analysts. There were about twelve of them. They were all men. And I was like, you know, you have two women running this. Why are women on the screen that are analysts that are actually talking about politics and analyzing it? And they're like, well, we don't have any. You know, I mean, who, who do you want? Like, who should we pick? And I'm like, OK, why don't we create them? If you're going to create male analysts, you can create female analysts as well. Find the right people with the right background, put them on TV, force them to be on it, and get them to do it. And that's what we did. So a program that we do has four female analysts now, just because of that one day that we pushed women to be on it. So the only way is. And women, uh, I feel like we also tend to kind of not push for credit that we deserve. Uh, I, I, mean, I don't know if that resonates with everybody, but I feel like it does resonate with some women. And I think that they need to. They do fantastic, great stuff. And if they are asked and they are pushed, they should do it. 
but I think that also the 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 majority responsibility falls on the men, the men that kind of do handle and control everything. It falls on them to say, you know, look, you're great at this. You need to get on and and talk about it because they don't think about that with other men. Mm. It's like you know, the man says, you know, mm. I'm I'm sorry if I'm being a little bit controversial, but I have mm. seen that. Uh, happen quite a lot. It's like you know, yeah, I'll get the guys to do it. I mean, what's she gonna do in this? That does tend to happen. So the more women support women, and the more that's gonna happen, and it has. I mean, I've and the more men, men that support men, uh, women, yeah, and the men that support women, and, like, women, exactly, yeah, hundred percent. Very good. Um, on that note, um, I think it's. I think it's great that we've got this conversation kicked off. Um, that's exactly the kind of tone that we're trying to set with with uh, Splice Beta. We want to make sure that gender balance is first of all a priority and that people understand that it is possible to create excess and diversity um, even in, a, in an industry like this. Uh, so that's the perfect way to, to end this uh, first session. Uh, we have, let's say, tomorrow. Tomorrow's big. Tomorrow's big. Tomorrow uh, is big. Do you want to? Tomorrow is Hamish. Uh, Mackenzie, uh, Hamish runs a little company called Substack, which no one's heard of, <laughs> which nobody's ever heard of. Um, I'm I'm so excited that Hamish agreed to 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 jump in. Um, we absolutely love the people who we follow on Substack. Obviously, um, you know I still remember when when our uh, our friend Erin Cook said that she was starting up a Substack newsletter for Dari Mulut Ke Mulut. Her absolutely amazing newsletter that is a wrap of the ASEAN region. Um, Hamish comes on tomorrow um, at uh, 1 p.m. Singapore time. Uh, it's 1 to 2 p.m. Singapore time tomorrow, Wednesday, September 2. His session is called What Substack is Doing to Support Independent Journalists by Giving Them Both a Platform and a Way to Monetize Their Work. It's frankly an idea that I wish we had, we had thought of. Hey, not too late to steal. Um, <laughs> so what's what's interesting about Hamish is that uh, he's a former journal himself. So he's done he's done this work before uh, before going on to to starting up a, a media platform, right? And, and supporting independent editors and journalists, people who are who are now newly retrenched from uh, from their their newsroom positions, who've started newsletters on their own. So uh, Substack is fantastic in that space. If you're looking to start something new. Uh, make sure you're you're joining us tomorrow for that one. Uh, once again, if you can't join us, you know all of this stuff will be recorded anyway. It'll be on our our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. Uh, and before we wrap this up, uh, we have um, a question from uh, from Corin, who's who's asking, how do we network at Splice Beta? Easiest way, uh, well, there, there are a few easy ways to this. Uh, our Telegram group. Is some it's a, it's a place that you need to spend a little bit more time at just because everyone else is there. Uh, join our Telegram group, say hello, introduce yourself, uh, but also talk about what you want to get out of beta. Uh, talk about what you are able to offer uh, in terms of knowledge, in terms of skills. Uh, I think that's a great way to, to get started. Also, um, like we were saying before, uh, we have a mentorship program, a mentorship matching program. Uh, if you have very specific needs, around business, around product, around management, get in touch and we'll hook you up with some of the really some of the really smart people that, that we know in the space. So so please do that. Uh, and once again, you know, one quick way is also to just leave your, your email address in the chat box. Uh, anytime you show up for a session, everyone here is friendly, everyone wants to learn from each other. So with that, well thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for coming. We'll Again, leave everything in the chat box, emails, telegram, just go for it. I mean, feel free to get in touch. Uh, we'll see you again tomorrow.